So thank you everybody for attending and please welcome Christoph who will talk about how to contribute to Disto Tracker. So Christoph, it's all to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, so today we are going to speak about Distro Tracker um, and also about how to contribute to it and maybe it gives a little feedback about uh, how I experienced it and uh, it can help in other, other projects too. So um, that's the menu. We'll go through it. Um, so the, the main thing is um, practically if you want to, to help in this road tracker, uh, we have a documentation which is well written and uh, here is a little summary of it. Uh, in Debian we like to use emails and use the bug tracking system so every new feature or problems is listed there. Um, it can be intimidating to to email the publicly uh, when you have questions, but that's the way we, uh, we, we used to. There is um, a pseudo package called uh, tracker.debian.org, uh, which you can use. So tracker is not a package yet, it's not packaged in Debian, but there's still a, a pseudo package you can use to, to refer to it in the BTS. Um, we have a list of, of tasks suitable for newcomers. Uh, the new newcomer tag is something new. It appeared last year, I think. Uh, it's the idea is to to let new people uh, get in Debian and have some mentorship from people who are more experienced. So it's it's a great way to um, to start volunteering for for packages or for projects and to to learn to interact with uh, with each others. Uh, of course, you can uh, install Distro Tracker locally, hack on it, and share what you did. Uh, it is maintained by the quality assurance team. Um, so we have um, an IC channel and a mailing list. Feel free to join. And uh, please use it and give, give us free feedback. So currently, it's not the, um, the package tracking uh, by default. It's not the official package tracking. Uh, but it will s maybe it will soon be maybe uh, the <laughs> this there's still a, a little more work uh, many uh, um, around the, the mail system it, it could be stronger so we we're waiting to fix that before before uh, pushing it so what is this throw tracker uh, it's a it's a tool that gives you a lot of information um, on packages. Well, you can get this information with other tools uh, like dpkg or, or Madison or I don't know. But uh, imagine you're, you're an advanced user and you, you need a software that more, you need a, a recent version of a software. Uh, you can go on Tracker and look for that software, you, you will see that Unstable has such a version and testing has another one. And also you, you can notice the differences and, uh, and yeah, I, I, like to I like to think of, of the web page of Tracker. Uh, it's kind of a single point of contact with all the informations and all the other tools uh, are linked there. So it can be used for by contributors, advanced users, teams and upstreams to, um, to know what's happening about one, one package. Uh, you can track several packages that could be used by teams. Um, yeah. So the two main interfaces are, are the web interface and also uh, there's a mail system that's quite powerful. You, you can subscribe to it and and get the same emails as maintainers um, do, or just um, just a set of it. You, you can just opt for specific emails about, I don't know, translation, derivatives, bugs, or what you care about. So let's talk about the design. 
Uh, it's really better than the, the old P PTS, which is good, but it's yet better. Uh, this one has uh, testing-driven development, so we, we try to write the test first, watch them fail, and, and then fix them, fix the code, I mean. Uh, it uses Django, which advertises itself as fast, secure, and reliable. Uh, so it's really something that helps to, to build tools upon, upon it and, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we trust, uh, we trust to, that using uh, such a framework gives us structure and, and uh, the possibility to, to code well. So we developed uh, a few different modules, Django modules, they are called applications, but it's, those are just uh, Python, Python modules. Um, there's one about the user management, uh, which could be used by other projects. That it's interesting because it combines, one user can, can have several email addresses and it's often the case with Debian collaborat collaborators. Uh, the project is well documented in the code and outside. It can be used by derivatives. Uh, currently it's only used by, it, it's already used by Kali. Uh, and yeah, maybe the idea is that all Debian de derivatives could use the same tool to, to manage the, the package and the, the distro. Um, so if you maintain, if you're part of a der derivative, um, Try it. In comparison with the previous PTS, this one is dynamic. Uh, the previous one computed the data a few times a day. And it has user in instances, so you can customize it for your own needs. Uh, for the moment, it doesn't go for very far, but we can imagine uh, to, to have much more specific customization. Who are the people involved? Uh, it's the um, quality assurance team, and it, the project was started by Raphael, I think, who's also one of the author of the previous PTS. Um, and yeah, there were two mentorship programs um, to try to have people contributing to the project. Uh, I was part of the second one. It's called the New Contributor Game. It was organized by De Debian France. France. And uh, initially, uh, there was also a summer of codes. Uh, and Marco Lalic um, did, did the initial work. And yeah, those programs are, in my opinion, really a, a great way to, to learn, to interact in Debian, and to, to learn to, to program, and a lot of other things. Uh, because you have a, a good re relation with somebody who's already in, in Debian and who understands all the, all the things. So if, if you have the opportunity to, to do su such programs or, or to use the, the newcomer tags, um, you, you should. Uh, there, there have been 17 people contributing to, to this show tracker until now. Uh, the project has started two years ago in 2013, and the previous PTS, I, have, I think it's in 2001. And those are the people who did one or more commits. And you are welcome to join, of course. Some thoughts about volunteering. Um, I have. So Debian is about packaging free software, uh, but there are a lot of other tasks, of course. Uh, my s if I talk about my experience, uh, I'm, I'm a Django developer, so uh, that was a really good opportunity for me to, to contribute to Debian because that's something I, I really wanted to. I also tried to maintain a few packages, but I feel what, what I can help the best is such projects. There, there are a lot of other projects using Django in Debian. Those, 
Summit, for instance, uh, we have our own instance of Summit. I, I heard they're, they're looking for Django developers. Uh, and Enrico has several Django projects. He, he needs help. And also, if you know HTML or CSS and all the web things, there's a strong need uh, in various Debian projects. You can watch this address. It's a census of all the, all the services um, Debian has on the web. And basically, they, they, they all would be happy to have some help in, uh, in the HTML design and those kind of things. Uh, why should you do it? Uh, because it's fun, because it's an opportunity to learn. Uh, in Debian, we value communities, so uh, we tend to work in teams. There's a list of teams. Uh, please read it if you, you haven't done yet. And um, that's it. I was quite faster than I thought, but we have uh, a lot of time for questions. Thank you. <laughs> So it's not really a question, but uh, I want to thank uh, Christo for having made this talk because actually I was supposed to do it. Uh, Paul White asked me, and I said, oh, not another talk. Let's try to bring some new blood. And Christoph, as, uh, as he said, he joined us uh, during a game, so it's not so long ago, and he's doing really a great job uh, on the digital tracker. There are not many people helping us, or me rather than us. <laughs> Uh, most of the code has been written by Marco Lalic, he's uh, the student who made the summer of code. At that time he said he wanted to continue to con contribute and he, he would help us, but after the summer he disappeared. And I'm basically uh, maintaining it uh, alone with sometimes commit from Paul Wise and uh, Christophe and a few people, but I would really like more help. Um, I took the time to tag the bug newcomers, as I said, so uh, I will review all your patches uh, quite quickly. So you'll be, if you want to help, you can be sure that you will be, you will have uh, quick feedback, and uh, it will be quickly deployed. Because if the test passes, I just install it. Uh, I double check that you have written tests first, but uh, otherwise I deploy it. <laughs> so. If you have a few questions, uh, we can ask. I would uh, have expected a few questions, but if you don't have any, it's no problem. Did you, did you measure how many people use the new tracker? No. Did you do some kind of survey or something? Because personally, I use the old one. I have no idea why, precisely, be because. Uh, basically the same functionality. Uh, well, that would be interesting maybe to see. Uh, when you take me as a sample, it's 100% the old one. Hmm. So maybe you could do some kind of survey. It's more like uh, Yeah, good idea. A lot of people told me they, they tried and they, even some of them are using the, the new one. But actually, the, all the links are pointing to the, to the current one. So there'll be one moment we, we're going to do the switch. We're not so far from it, but let's do it properly. Okay. <laughs> well, this I, we have no statistics. I didn't bother looking at it, but uh, it's clear that the old one is going to disappear at some point. Uh, the, the new one is doing pretty well. well, well it's database based, so sometimes uh, when the database is restarted for security reasons, uh, it won't work for a few minutes, but uh, 
otherwise uh, it's really reliable like that. and uh, mainly uh, I, I don't trust fully the, the mail parts um, because during the summer of code we had some problems uh, due to the way Exim uh, f forks hundreds of processes when he gets hundreds of commit mails in the same second and it tends to put uh, several down so I just want we, we just want to add a, a mail queue in the front of the processing uh, I always think that I will be able to do it in next month but well uh, I mean that's like for two, two years now so <laughs> I don't give you any date if you do it the sooner <laughs> There's a link on the old tracker pointing to the new one. Um, I guess m m more people are using the new one uh, now, but I can't be sure. I did not bother to look this at the stat. Excuse me? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Um, so what does it need to become the default tracking system? As, as Raphael says, uh, I think the, the mail part is, um, it, it wouldn't handle the load. That's how I understand it. For now, it, it needs some parts of the, of the mail handling um, should be better. Uh, the, the, the web part is efficient, but yeah, what's really interesting? Not true. No? <laughs> it's efficient enough for this for the load we have, but it's not efficient. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, mostly the, the mail part needs to, to be correct, corrected. And yeah, I haven't looked deep in t into it, so maybe Raphael can say more about it. Well, as, as I just explained, it's uh, uh, it does work. M many people are using it. Uh, we did knob some exim configuration to avoid the problem on uh, most cases but it's really uh, the knob <laughs> we can use is only the load of the machine so basically it will uh, run under the processes bringing the machine really slow but then it will stop processing and it will wait a bit so I it doesn't kill the machine anymore but it's not nice enough in my opinion other people can convince me the other way, but I have not f felt any urgency to switch, uh, and I rather I'd rather finish and fix this correctly first. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christoph.